Have you ever noticed that some of the things that make you happy are incredibly simple? For my friend Ethan and his mother Alexia, it was a window in Ethan's hospital room. Now, let me back up a little bit. Around three years ago, my friend Ethan was playing frisbee at summer camp. The weather was beautiful, not a cloud in sight, when suddenly Ethan was struck by lightning. In the blink of an eye, everything changed for Ethan. Despite the efforts of emergency personnel and camp staff, Ethan stopped breathing and his heart stopped beating. So he suffered a severe brain injury. Ethan was no longer able to walk, talk, or even breathe on his own. But over time, Ethan made tremendous progress. At first, he was in the hospital for several months at a time, requiring constant care. But eventually, he was allowed to go home, while still frequently being readmitted to the hospital. His hospital visits gradually became less and less frequent over time. Back to the window. When Ethan was in the hospital, the window in his room was the only thing connecting him to the world outside of his own. It gave him and his mother peace of mind. The damage from the lightning strike left Ethan with little to no motor control and the inability to communicate. This is where I come in. Last fall, I learned that Ethan can blink his eyes in response to yes or no questions to answer them. This is when my idea was born. Since Ethan has control over his head, I thought of creating a simplified keyboard for him with just two buttons. But given some more thought, this wouldn't have worked well. It would have taken a lot of time and effort for Ethan to type out even simple words. Eventually, I settled for an idea similar to the original, but with just yes or no responses. I continued improving upon it until I have the current design, which you can see be beside me and up on the screen. As you can see, this display has a button hooked up to each side. Uh, when I press this one on the, on the left side, it'll change to yes, and when I press the button on the right, it will change to no. Normally, these buttons are mounted on the headrest of Ethan's wheelchair, so he can press them since he has no motor control of his hands yet. Now, this is great and all, but a reasonable question to ask right now is, why is this any better than Ethan blinking his eyes to communicate? With my device, Ethan can more easily communicate to a group, and having real conversations makes him overjoyed. But rather than just describing this, I can show the video of the first test we did with the device. For some context, my family had Ethan's family and some other friends over for a holiday dinner last fall. Afterwards, Ethan had his first real conversation in over three years. So Ethan, when we ask you a question, if the answer is yes, we want you to bring your head over to the left. Ready? Try that. You're going. There. And it says yes. If the answer is no, turn your head over to the right. Uh-huh. Yes. There's no. Very good. All right. So who has a question for Ethan? Hey, Ethan. Did the Cincinnati Reds win the World Series this year? <laughs> Do you like the Cincinnati Reds, Ethan? Left for yes, right for no. Do you like the Reds? <laughs> Right now, you might be thinking that this is amazing that a 14-year-old can create such a complex device that can make such a large impact on somebody. But to tell the truth, my device isn't really very complex at all. It's rather simple. While this tangle of wires plugged into a scary-looking circuit board might look hard to use or scary, 
when you get down to it, it isn't. To help you understand, I'll explain the individual components. The blue board up on the screen is the brain of the device. This is an Arduino Uno. Essentially, it's a tiny programmable computer. This is the part that sees when you press a button and changes the display accordingly. The wires that connect it tell the display which pixel should be what color. As you can see over here, normally all of these parts are covered by this 3D printed case. The earlier versions of the device didn't have a case like that, since at the time I didn't have a 3D printer to print it with. But shortly after I created the original version of the device, as seen in the video earlier, someone became inspired by my story and by Ethan's story. They decided to set up a GoFundMe campaign to purchase me a 3D printer. And to my amazement, it reached its goal. This is an example of another wonderful impact technology like this can have. Now that you hopefully have a better understanding of how the device works and how it's so simple, I should explain why that's what makes it so special. The resources I used to create it are so accessible that anybody can get them and use them. There are dozens of guides on websites like YouTube, Instructables, Adafruit, and SparkFun that'll show you the basics of using this technology and more. Even a simple Google search will yield dozens of helpful results. This is why anybody can do something just like what I did here. A question people ask me pretty frequently is, where did my original interest in this technology come from? Originally, it came from my dad. As a former rocket scientist, he is very skilled at using technology like the Arduino. After becoming curious about a kit we owned, he taught me some basics on how to use it. I continued learning on my own from there while occasionally asking him for help. The more I learned about it, the more interested I became. Now, you might not have a rocket scientist in your family to help you start learning, <laughs> but you can certainly start online using the resources that I mentioned earlier. Again, it looks hard, but it really isn't. I strongly encourage all of you in the audience to do a quick search and start learning. If you do, you might just open a window for someone in your community. Thank you.